614-615. Welcome to the select board meeting, October 28th, 2024. Uh, we believe that we conform to the open meeting law with the agenda posted in three places on the website and emailed to a bunch of people. If you want to be on that email list, just let Julie know. We have first order of business is to approve the prior meeting minutes from October 14th, 2024. I have read over these meeting minutes and I believe Frank has as well. Mm -hmm. I see no significant changes. Very well done, thank you. Thanks. I move that we accept these minutes. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next thing we have on our list is uh, new business. Um, we do have a recommendation for a uh, continuance of our town health officer's term of office, which expires on November 30th. So the state of Vermont suggested that we continue to nominate, and we agree, John White as our health officer. We've checked with John, and he has agreed to this. So I nominate John White as the Rochester Health Officer. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go, John. You got it. Congratulations. Third on our list, moving right along, appoint Carol Twitchell as the co-animal control officer. We had discussions about this in our last meeting on October 14th, and um, it was a positive discussion to add a second person to the animal control officer position as um, she lives with the animal control officer and often accompanies him on to calls. Um, this would not be any compensation for this role. This is purely a voluntary role. So I nominate to appoint Carol Twitchell as the co-animal control officer and we didn't really set a term. Um, would she also follow the term of Jeff? Mm -hmm. So as long as Jeff's term lasts, Carol will be there with him to assist him when necessary. I nominate Carol. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Congratulations, Carol. Keep the critters happy. Next on our list, I think I'd like to skip over the next thing on our list and perhaps satisfy Cooter and send him off home um, is a discussion approval of a Valero gas card for the highway department. They, uh, they often work difficult hours or if they have to bring uh, a truck out of town to get repaired, sometimes it has to go way out of town to get repaired. Um, I did have a note on that saying um, for the fleet cards, who, what, why, when, and where is often how I respond to things. Um, will all three of the road crew possess a card? To be one truck, and whoever is in the truck will have to sign. And it would be for gasoline. Gasoline. And I think I already noted the why part because sometimes hours don't agree. You need to get something done. You need to be out of town. So, um, and we will probably uh, be applying for this right away as winter is okay. quickly approaching. And this particular card can be used at any gas station or only Valero stations. It's on there, there's two, there's two cards. The one that we went with doesn't have any um, restrictions, yearly fees or whatever. Okay. The other car does have yearly fees, and you can get gas at like 90% of gas stations. So I believe, it was my understanding, it's just Valero. Okay. So um, this would function at a good amount of gas stations, especially the one in town. Right. 
Yep. Okay. Really what we need. Right. Yep. <clears throat> I would go the no fee one. Okay. I move that we accept applying for the Valero Fleet fuel cards. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You got it. Tomorrow I'll let you know. Have a good one. Thanks for coming. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's slip backwards to the Murray Farms Solar. I think is it it's the Murray Solar Farm, isn't it? Murray Farms Solar Solar Farm. <laughs> um, you have filed with the PUC. Yeah, let me just ask you, do you have other things on your agenda that um, <sighs> my parents, a couple of family family members have had a conflict? I've got um, Don and Jean, okay, Murray, and then, and then I have Karen. Okay, <laughs> she's driving here, but she asked me if I could delay it, but I, I don't want to hold you up, so. Okay, that's okay. Are we going forward? Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so. We do know that there is an application with a 45-day notice that has been um, submitted to the Public Utilities Commission. And um, we're open to the discussion. I believe that's our role here is discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we came here several years back and we're just trying to do the same thing that we couldn't do before because we had a couple of family emergencies and we just dropped the whole thing. So. Um, and at the time, you guys said that we should go to the planning board. Um, and then the planning board wanted to get, which is the letter I was trying to bring up. I don't think I have a copy of it here. Um, Jeff Gephardt's committee of opinion from them. So they wrote a letter in favor of it. And um, the planning board had said that they were in favor of it. And Dan wrote a letter um, to you guys and I guess was trying to help figure out whether it would be a, a joint letter or separate letters. And I have examples that he also has of where some towns did it as a joint letter or as separate letters. And the preferred site status, it doesn't mean, um, you know, anybody's particular opinion about whether it's their preference in the state, the town, or a particular spot. It just means whether it meets the criteria. And we met the criteria, we're not on wetlands, we're not, um, it's not. So it, it, for example, the big one at the sand pit, they don't need to meet their criteria because it's a sand pit, it's automatically a preferred site. Anything on a roof is automatically a preferred site. Anything that's below 15 kW is automatically, doesn't need to go through this process. So we're kind of in a unique, um, and it, it basically just, it's financially makes it doable. And we're just trying to have um, our family have it big enough so that our family right house four houses in town and we hope our family grows in the town and we just want to all be uh, renewable and having the solar that we're living off of and feel like we're in the direction that Vermont is trying to go and Rochester is trying to go. We're just trying to do our part. Um, and so we're feeling badly. We haven't done it yet, but um, that's basically the, the premise of it. And any particular questions and happy to answer. Dan has some information too. Yeah, so this came before the Planning Commission back in um, 2022, and we had a hearing about it. We went through all these criteria, as Deegan mentioned, and we approved it as a preferred site, which is uh, the way it works in the process. The Planning Commission reviews it um, in terms of whether they uh, believe it's a preferred site, that they, but the Murrays need a, a letter jointly or multiple letters all saying the same thing from the select board, the planning commission, and the regional planning commission, all saying we agree, uh, we support this as a preferred site. <clears throat> and, and we have heard back from Two Rivers? <clears throat> um, I have not. I emailed them last, middle of last week, okay. um, see if they had a letter or if they would you know, do a letter in, um, concurring with our, so we reviewed uh, the town plan and, and the um, criteria that Tegan mentioned, you know, rooftops and little gravel pits and things like that. And um, the, the Regional Planning Commission did note that this, that the site had constraints um, and it was noted as additional farmland of statewide importance. Mm -hmm. And we looked at, you know, the valley and our, our farmland and we felt that it um, did not rise to the, to the level of excluding it from, from that area. 
So the select or the planning commission um, recommends to the select board that it be um, a preferred site, and then we'll um, also ask the uh, regional planning commission to also do a letter. Some towns do a joint letter with the planning commission and the select board, or two different letters. It's noted here that it's a 50 kW system. Yes. Um, so are there requirements for the solar panels to feed back into the system? No are there uh, power poles? Well, that's up to Green Mountain Power. That's okay. all up to them. We have, I can give you yeah. They're, they probably have recommended what you need to do in order to do this. Is yes. that correct? Yes. They have a letter in here, too. Right here, I have. We have a letter from them for interconnection, um, and then okay. you come and look at the fold that we would uh, connect to. Right. Um, and they have to give their blessing to the project. Right. That was part mm -hmm. of the package that we submitted. I think you guys right. have a copy of that. Yeah. Connection. Yeah, we do. Oh, we have it yeah. in front yeah. of us. And then. Just to add to something that Dan said, the regional commission said they can't write a letter until they have both the select board and the planning board's letters. Okay. And I called them because it kind of became timely because, I don't know how much you've been following, but community solar in Vermont is being put on hold for we don't know how long, and kind of a lot of people in solar are upset about it. Um, I work for several different solar companies myself, so I'm very involved with that. But... So it's technically community solar because it's net metering to different houses that are not on the property. So having, doing this, um, and we also have the, till next year to do our grant, otherwise we lose our grant. So um, I was worried about the timing of it, and so I called the Regional Planning Commission twice and spoke to Kevin um, Gaggy, as he was on the- Geiger, Geiger. Yep. yeah. And then I also spoke with Kyle, I forget his last name. And they said that they, it takes them an hour but they can't do it until they have the order is they need the local two letters first, and then they just make sure that it doesn't, you know, fits all their criteria. So um, they're just waiting for, for the letters. Mm -hmm. And at the planning board meetings, um, was it attended by community members and neighbors? Yeah, it was a warrant hearing um, attended by neighbors. We got feedback from uh, a number of people. So there was no significant um, opposed views? There was <clears throat> opposition from one neighbor who believes it'll be in his view shed. Mm -hmm. um, I had a comment from um, a townsperson. I'm not going to say whether it's neighbor or not, but um, they were just overall a little disappointed in the uh, how solar is now uh, encouraged all around the state when back in the 70s they banned the billboards because they were ugly. And so uh, that is about the only feedback that I got so far. Um, the legislature has endorsed solar wholeheartedly. Therefore, um, we would follow the state's wish. And um, as long as uh, Green Mountain Power is good with it, um, I see that you also did a study about wetlands. Um, I will be driving by it every morning myself. Are they tracking or are they there's... No, so that was one thing I wanted to say. And we've been in contact with both um, Kinley and, and the Blaines, um, both who had some concerns. One who wrote a letter and then later said, we're really sorry, we didn't mean to cause any harm, you know, do what you want. And then Kinley's asked some questions recently. We want to do everything in keeping with what the neighbors want. And it's, it's actually going to be very close. I'm currently living in the front house. It's very close to that house. And we want to do everything. We, so. We had talked about it before. We were trying to do low profile. We've decided we're definitely doing the low profile. So this is an example of, of what the low profile looks like. So it's, it's a panel that usually like a ground mount will have two um, going this way. That's often how they're done. Oh, that's really high. But this would be going landscape. So the panels go and then it's very low to the ground. So it starts off at about that high and goes to about that high. And so it's much less noticeable. Problem is you have to grass whip around it. <laughs> it gets covered by snow. It's personally a huge burn to have to deal with it, but it's something that we decided to do because of, you know it's less visible and um, it's also user friendly. Two people can, I've built them in other places. Two people can just do it. You don't need big machines. It's um, so, and it's easily movable. So um, 
that this is, a, this is one that's much bigger than, than we wanted. And this question was probably asked, asked by the Planning Commission. Because you have the low-rise system, can uh, some shrubbery or something be planted along the roadside? Yeah. To, yeah and yeah. then it, we it, talked about that. It's yep. Absolutely. We, we would endorse that and look forward to that, okay. um, not immediately, but as, as, as after it's installed and as time goes by. That What's would the be approximate great. length of it? That's a good you question. Know. I think, my father, I think, is on Zoom. I think we measured it to be like 60 by 90 or 60 by 80. Um, Dad, you're on Zoom. Do you remember what we calculated the dimensions? And you're on mute, Sean. It was under 100 in both directions. I think it was like 60 by 90 or 80 by 95 or 60 by so the, somewhere in that range. Yeah, I, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, I think 60 by 90 or maybe a slightly larger. Um, yeah. By 90. Was, was the 90 I, parallel I, to the road or the 60? I think 90 is parallel to the road, but I'm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's really yeah. Right. It's really yep. Yeah. It's not like it's near the road. It's way close. Yeah. It's down near the house. Yeah. 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 In between the house and the pond. It's right. Actually, my sister was saying it's like a bad spot because it's slightly like a little bit downhill. <laughs> right. But we're just trying to do it out of the way, and we really yeah. do a lot of easier spots that would be more visible, but we're kind of like trying to hide it. Um. Is it on the other side of the power line or that goes so, down through there? So there's a pole that actually, so there's like a right of way where the, the line there goes through my parents' land uh, right. by the pond. Right. And there's a pole right there. Um, and the service would drop from there and then be like an underground conduit to where the, the panels are. Right. Um, so that would be the pole that it would be coming off of. Cool. Looks like, um, is it Tara has a Tara. question? If you want to unmute, Tara, you're welcome. My sister. She's on her way here, but she got held up. Or maybe she doesn't yeah. mean to have her hand up. I'm not sure. <laughs> and if you. Do we, yeah, do we have someone problem. making a comment? No, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Don Murray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Two things. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about the footprint, but it's it's roughly what Tayin is saying. Uh, also, we kept losing uh, connection for some reason. It was said this you were disconnected, so we had, had we missed some of the, what was yeah. being said. But uh, I just want to say that we did consider every possible spot that we could put it on our land, uh, excluding cutting down whole forest or trees um, and in every case it was either um, shaded by trees to the south or would be in the very center of a field that would be make it very difficult hay for field. agricultural purposes a hay field. so a hay field so um, we we tried to find a better spot in terms of what people would see but we just there isn't one and anything way in the back was too far This is the letter that I meant to print out um, from Jeff um, from the Valley Energy Climate Action Committee, which I'm actually a very active member on. I, I meant to print that out to give to you guys, but I don't know if you wanted to read that, um, in, in which their committee is also supporting it. And that was what had originally got the planning board wanted to see. So if that's something, I apologize, I meant to print that before coming. Yeah, no, that's okay. If you just print it out and send it with it. Sure. That'd be good that we have a record of it. I'll send it. That'll be good. I will send it. Yep. And send a copy to Dan, too. Okay. That'd be great. I'm sure it's in our, our, our I, file. Yeah, I sent it. I emailed it to you, but um, oh, okay. I might have it printed today. So you have, a, you have a copy of it, Dan? Yeah. Okay. So this was filed on October 10th. Am I correct there? Uh, I think it was October 5th. October 5th. Okay. Uh, no, uh, Dave filed the 10th. It was, it says no, it was a little after the 5th. Yeah, that sounds right. So this is the 45-day period. We are in the middle of the 45-day period. Um, I, uh, I see no reason to not proceed if you think that perhaps you want to wait until Dune's back to make a decision. Um, I don't 
think I, that's a necessary... I don't think that he would be opposed or, or no, have any position besides what our position is. I, I think it's got the Planning Commission's blessing, and they do the pretty much the land they use do. stuff. They do. They do all the legwork. Really, we have to. <laughs> we just need to to comply with what they need to do, and I think they've done their homework. So I don't see any reason why we don't go forward with it. And what what we're looking for is a letter of support from the select board. Yeah, and. Um, Different ways of doing it. Um, Tegan shared something that the um, town of Wyndham did. They wrote the letter to the Public Utility Commission and was signed by both Select Board and Planning Commission. Okay, so um, whichever way you prefer. Sent separate mm -hmm. letters from the Select Board and Planning Commission. So. Well, we get along with our Planning Commission very well. We would join in on your letter. <laughs> so um, you have the letter I have drafted there, um, and I could change that to um, have it go to the Public Utilities Commission um, from both of us. We could both sign yeah. it. And then we'll yeah. send that over to the Regional Planning Commission and they can um, right. work with Tegan to do a concurrence letter. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, it shows too. that we're all in agreement and we're all going in the same direction, right. if yeah. that's OK. And so once that's drafted, just drop it off and we can sign it because I move that uh, we accept doing a letter endorsing the proposed solar field to the PUC. Mm -hmm. I second. Endorsing the preferred site. And the site, yeah. correct. Yep. Second? I, I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Got it. You You're one step closer. Is that a copy of the letter that Dan was referring to that they, you, or you're going to write it to you? Yeah. I, I, used have, the no. that I, I, I wrote back in. February okay. <laughs> um, and I'll just change sorry. it so it'll be sorry we, we, we dropped the thing for, yeah. for a while we're just yeah. overwhelmed with other things. I think I think it was my fault I think I didn't carry through on that letter and, and sign it and then come to the select board for concurrence so well we had other uh, reasons we stopped so okay. don't feel don't feel bad right. fine. okay <laughs> no one's in trouble here <laughs> no, no. thank you for all your help you're, you're welcome you thank you yeah. good luck yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah. I do have one application for use of the town park. Um, this one's a little timely because it is talking about election day. And this is from Lizzie Shackelford, who would like to use the town park for getting out the vote. Two or three volunteers will hold signs along the park reminding people to go vote, weather permitting. We might bring a couple of goats to help draw attention. <laughs> um, so the purpose of the event is to get out the vote. And um, so the only uh, exception I take to this application is that she was they were going to start at 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Our polls don't start till 10. So I, I don't want them soliciting people at 8 a.m. and we're not here for them to vote. So um, would the... Um, adjustment that they can get out there at 10 a.m. and stay out until 7 p.m. after dark. Um, I move that we could accept this application to the town park. News. Yeah, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And because that was timely, it was not on the agenda, but I think we can move that one along. The last thing on our... We're good to get that over with. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have the September treasurer's report prepared and in hand, and it's getting thicker and thicker all the time. Um, I move that um, we approve it. We are um, July, August, uh, three months into the year, so it's it's uh, starting to have a little meat to it. But uh, the numbers the numbers look right, and I move that we accept this report. Second it. All in favor? All right. Sign it. The application? Yes. sign this too. 
showing you what here when we did it. Uh, I don't think I have to. It's up to you. But, well, I think only one person. Needs so to that go. takes care of the agenda. We're going to move on to our departmental reports. We are going to start out with the library, and I think we're going to get a report from the library. Hi, Tony. Hello. What well, saves you? The library has uh, a number of programs going as Maya keeps running these things for us. Oh, she's doing great. Well, the best time to, the best way to do it is to look at the paper, as I say, because otherwise I could be here talking for 15 minutes <laughs> telling you about it. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the big thing. And we are concerned about the side of the library that you had uh, someone look at and uh, haven't looked at it yet they well, haven't no nope. they well, haven't they haven't right. been in contact with me I've tried them a couple different times and they haven't gotten back to me so looks like we'll have to do it at another time <laughs> okay but but it is it needs to be done Tony yeah, it's a, it done. Jeff's given a ballpark estimate it's like a hundred and fifty thousand to fix that and that's ripping the siding off and getting into it and fixing it. Replacing the three lower windows on each side. <clears throat> so it's a pretty substantial renovation that's going to need to happen there. So that's an issue that's going to have to be addressed by the town and, and the budget itself. Yeah. It's not something that you just, you know, can do right off, so... So I don't really know what to tell you other than it needs to be done, you know. I, I totally agree with you 100% on that. So will Lake, will Breadloaf come back? To I, Canada? I'll get, I'll try to keep in touch with him to yeah. see if he'll, you know, still honor his commitment. But, and if he won't, then we'll try to get somebody else to deal with it. If they'd come over and give us a ballpark on what, what we can do there. Because we need to have an assessment whether or not it's it's really deep or not, in order to fix it. Right. And so, we'll keep it up, keep it on the burner. That's all we can do. All right. Thank you. All and right. don't forget Front Porch Forum. Maya is very active on Front Porch Forum, promoting her programs as well. Yeah. And posters all over town. Posters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Amaya also sends me news every week for the Herald, so there's another. Uh, Absolutely. Issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Martha. Yes. <laughs> She's taking notes. All right. Oh, I just wanted to say, as a parent of a little one, she's done an amazing job at the library of having events and, and making making explorer packs and all these different fun things to do. So is, it, is it fun going to the library? There we go. Thank you. She keeps you pretty busy, doesn't she? Oh. <laughs> I don't know how she does it all. Oh. I don't either. Okay. Thank you. She enjoys her work. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really what it is. Well, Frank's going to talk about highway now. No, uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot. They're gearing up for winter, and they got the new truck. And fuel cards. And fuel cards. Mm -hmm. And excuse me, um, Pat and, and Frank, this has to do with the road crew. Yes, right. this is the highway department. Uh, yes, well, highway department, road crew, whatever. Um, I spoke with John at the town office today, and he told me that they should be able to, by hopefully tomorrow morning, because it's supposed to rain in the afternoon, get the, um, because I'm the park committee, and they should get the um, tables, uh, picnic tables and benches off the park and stored for the winter, because Halloween is Thursday, and we always get them off the park by then. Okay. And they're always they the ones who do it. So um, I talked to him, and he said he thought they should be able to do it tomorrow. So hopefully they can. Yeah. Uh, Halloween's supposed to be a nice warm It's supposed evening. to be like on the weather report t tonight. At the, um, I, it sounded like it was going to be around 70 or something on Halloween. Yeah, maybe a ha Halloween picnic would be in order on the park. <laughs> 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 but um, thank you for your concern. Okay. They are also down a man for a while, and they're not sure how long Teddy will be out, but he's going to be out for a bit. So we'll see what happens there. Utilities operator? Don't have one up here tonight. 
energy coordinator. On the energy thing, we got the windows. He's got them, most of them in, except for the two in the main office. I think those are the only two left, right? And you Throw guys the don't want them the because windows. of the... Oh, yeah. everyone, look at those windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, can't get, we can't get the blinds back up, so I don't want them to take them down quite until we get that figured out. Yeah, I don't blame you. You need to block the sun there during the yeah. day. But yeah. must it's helped a lot, yeah. I guess. Good. <coughs> Grant updates? Um, I just have two little things. Mm -hmm. um, for We still had an open... Um, project, I guess you could say, from the July 11th storm of 23. Um, and that is a culvert that was damaged um, up in the hollows by Mike Bowens. Um, we had to work a lot with the stream guy and do a bunch of extra stuff on that one, so it's taken us a while. Um, we put in um, an estimate of 42922 on that project. Um, FEMA gives the 75% federal share. So we've received the 32,192. Um, oh. Yep, and that is earmarked to be spent as of January 14th. Um, and so I'm already on that you have to get yourself on a wait list to get an extension. So I've been mm -hmm. communicating closely with Cooter. He knows that we've got the money. He knows that he's gonna do the project in the spring, but that'll happen next year so um late december mm -hmm. i will request the extension for that and okay we're keeping it in house regardless yep. Yes. okay yep and then just the other small one was we had a um a small well a fifteen thousand dollar grant for skate space um it was from the state of vermont the rec facilities um I've had really hard time um with communication with them um they haven't been responding um, but finally I received the form that I need to submit for reimbursement. So I submitted for reimbursement on 1021, um, confirmed today that they had received it, still hadn't heard from them, but so I'm working. On that. <laughs> so where are these people? <laughs> working hard for 15,000. Yeah. So that's it. Is that part of that re, uh, the resurfacing down there was that part of that <laughs> we just we just took part of that bill that we paid like the first original 46,000 or whatever it was right. and just put 15 of it towards this grant oh okay yeah that the decision on all of that will be made in the next couple of weeks hopefully there that's not going smooth mm -hmm. right. the decision of what they're going to do all right yep a lot of people and opinions are involved right now so they're trying to Come to agreements with everybody. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I've still only paid for half of that, just so everybody knows. Um, I've we've only paid for half of the skate space right now because the contractor doesn't want to submit his final bill yet. So. We're sitting on it. So that's in the ARPA funds still. S some of it. Yep. Yep. So is that? Okay with the ARPA people, we get that straightened out? Yep. Okay. Just have to do up a contract and yeah. Yeah. Um, get signatures and I'll probably have a resolution for you for the next meeting. Okay. Just because we're, we're getting down to the last little bit that's yeah. going to be... We've just got a couple... Hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then Larry and I will start closing that all out. They should be able yeah. to close it out. And I started working with him last week a little bit. He came in for a report on just where we were. And, right. Um, what we had spent and then what we had upcoming to show, like, where there would be a $0 balance. So we're getting there. Yep. We're down to, like, 40000 or something. Yep. yep. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, we old business. I don't know that I, we have anything. I have just one thing to say. Bring it on. On the uh, Pent Road up in uh, mm -hmm. West Hill, um, I've allowed the guy to keep his gate up until the final process is done on that road, um, but he can't lock it. I told him he couldn't lock the stupid thing. But anyway, part of the reason why we are eliminating that Pent Road is because we need to upgrade from the junction of West Hill Road 
to Henry's driveway, which is approximately a quarter mile. That is class four, and that was part of that Pent Road designation. And in order to upgrade that, we have to clean off the Pent Road designation of that road and go through the proper channels to reclassify that because we're treating it as a class three road forever, but we never upgraded it to class three, so we're not getting paid for, up, for any use on that road. Mm -hmm. So we need to go through the process to reclassify that section from the junction of West Hill Road to Henry's driveway. Mm -hmm. where we can turn around because we're maintaining it anyway and we have for years and why it was never taken on by anybody else I have no idea but it needs to be done to uh, we can get some revenue from that as a class three so but the road beyond the gate is still going to be the, class four the gates out beyond the four service yeah um, and <clears throat> technically being classified a class four road, Pent Road, the gate could have gone down right by the junction of, you know, West Hill and, and Jones Mountain Road. Mm -hmm. So we needed to dissolve the Pent Road status anyway One in order to reclassify yeah. that highway. And we need to do that in order to get any reimbursement from the state on that class. I have road. taken a ride out there. The gate is closed, but right. not locked. Good. Um, I did go beyond the gate and found several structures there on that property, but I did not continue on to uh, to the Sherman property. Um, the road does degrade from that point on. Um, so I went that far, and the gate was accessible. I went through it, went back through it, closed the gate, did not lock it. Yep. That's good. Okay. Do we have any public comment out there in... In house or Zoom land? Yes, this is Robert Franks. Hi, Robert. Hey, Patty. Hey, Frank. Hey, I have hey, two Bob. questions. Uh, my friend John Rogers and his wife attended the Harvest Fest. They purchased some signs made to look old, and they're trying to buy more, and I don't know where to go to find out who that vendor was. That's my first question. My three minutes, I don't want to run out. So, regarding the skate space, I put a number of questions out to Dean Mendel, and he adamantly refused to answer any. The next step was that I went to the town clerk's office of Rochester to find out where the money went. And uh, I was told by uh, an assistant there, Kristen, that uh, number one, I asked for the name of the accountant of Rochester. He would, she said she would be in deep doo-doo if she gave his name out. So that was number one, non-transparency. Number two, non-transparency. I was given the name of a gentleman by the name of Mr. Christensen. Yes, he and is. the proper phone number. He is the head of the rec committee, so he would be the person that you should be pointing the questions to rather than Dean Mendel. After taking my time, I called him three times, and the phone was answered, and I was hung up on. So my mission was to protect the taxpayers of the supervisor union. All I was trying to do was find out if any money from Jamie's supervisor union, the White River supervisory union, was included in any way regarding the skate space. So the, every uh, dean, uh, this guy, Mr. Christensen, I, I was ignored. And then I, I, I reached out to the supervisory union. So I, I'm just trying to find the financial answers. I was also told by the assistant town clerk, I asked, where does the money go from the grants? Who writes the grants? And unfortunately, I was told, I asked for, again, the accountant's name. And, and the quote was, I would be in deep doo-doo if I shared the accountant's name with anyone. So, um, I, I, you know, again, I, I, you guys can do whatever you want. I don't really care, but I do not want any taxpayers' money from the town of Bethel, the town of Stockbridge, being included in the skate space, which is right now not financed yet. So I, 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 I'm in a, uh, it's a, a conundrum. 
I can't get an answer from anyone. Can you or Frank answer my question? Who wrote the grant for the skate space? The money for the skate space came from several different areas, so it's not just one answer. They're, they're, they did a campaign to raise funds, so much of it was donations, and uh, some of it was I ARPA funds. Who wrote the grant? Um, I would check with who, Norm who Christensen, and I will get back to you on that, Robert. Okay, that would be fine. Who, who I don't wrote, understand why I dialed his number three times, confirmed the number, and I was hung up on. So it's all about transparency. That's it. It's, it's, I want the children to go enjoy skate space. In my heart, I love children and having fun. But the way this is going, it's uh, going to be a rocky skate space. Well, I mean, once they flood it and it freezes, it won't be rocky anymore. It'll be ice. <laughs> So um, I believe that it's completed and ready to be used once the weather I think they are it gets cold. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's a, oh, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Didn't Kristen just say she's waiting for some type of financing? That's that's beside the, the point. The project is completed. I'm I think I think she's waiting for the bill, Robert. Ready, waiting for the contractor to sign off. They had a, there, I think there was some issue with the cement mix or something that they're working out some kind of, of deal with each other on how to better do it or something. I'm, I'm right. not even sure what the particulars are of it, but it's in the rec department's issue and it's the money's set aside for this project and basically they they have to the contractor has to give them the final bill before it can be paid the money's all there i don't know if any money came from the su or not i couldn't answer that i know the original monies that they had gained was uh, approximately eighty eight thousand, and 20 of that was from arpa and i think we chipped in another five thousand of arpa funds roughly about that I don't know the exact numbers, but but that made it to the to the amount the contractor had agreed to do the job. Now I don't know as if he submitted his final bill yet, so we haven't paid him. But the money is all set out. Well, but Frank, Frank, how can how can a contractor complete a project when he doesn't know the actual numbers of what it's going to cost the town and he to be paid? He he's the number that, he, was a, uh, he, was a bid. he does know he does know he, the he, figure. It was a bid project, and he bid the bid the project at a certain dollar, and that's what was agreed upon. But he hasn't submitted the final bill yet. Well, don't you so think we, that we makes can't, the town of Rochester vulnerable to something? He might just say, "Hey, it's going to be twenty thousand dollars higher." No, there's a contract. Well, no, it was a contract that he agreed to do the project for X number of dollars, and that's what we agreed upon. We had a, we put it out to bid, and there was he was the only bidder. I realized, but at the same time, we had advertised it for bid, and there were several different contractors that looked at the project. He was the only one that addressed the project, but it was reasonable enough, and they had money enough to do it. it they were short about five thousand dollars. And we put that well, extra 5000 in wait, from the ARPA money. Well, wait a second. Didn't Kristen just say before I got on the phone that she's waiting for some kind of a financial uh, distance between what is owed or what was contracted and what is owed? It, it's all, all I want to make certain is that the town, the town surrounding Rochester and the supervisory union there is no property taxes. There is no money coming from Stockbridge, Bethel, Tunbridge, included in the mission to create a, a wonderful place for children to play. That's all I am asking. To the best of our knowledge, no funding came from outside of Rochester. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? To the best of our knowledge, no funding came from outside the town of Rochester, with the exception of 
people that live in other towns that may have donated their own money towards it. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, quote unquote, the best of your knowledge. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I'm just out to try to protect our increasing property taxes. And <clears throat> I'm all for anything to do with children and, uh, you know, families going there. And, uh, you know, Patty, you mentioned, oh, it's going to be ice covered soon. Well, yeah. hopefully in the spring, the children will have fun. So, and uh, in the summer, they can play with skateboarding. Yeah. Well, uh, going back to my first question, does anyone know who that vendor was at the Harvest Fair? I wasn't at the far Harvest Fair. I would, I would think somebody from the players might be able to, to let you know that. I don't know oh. who keeps track of that. I wouldn't. Or Martha maybe. Martha maybe would know. Yeah, I, well, I know. whoever it is, my friend John Rogers wants his wife wants to buy more product from that vendor. Okay, so I, you know, that's all I'm looking for. Martha, so Martha, do you know? Um, I I don't know what it what was it that he bought and I can't I don't remember off the top of my head we had forty vendors so I can't remember exactly yeah well it was uh, she creates signs that look like they're old you know vintage signs and they're wonderful they really are wonderful um, so I can look we, through my records but I can't guarantee you that I'll know for sure well if Martha if you could call me that would be great. It's all about economic development and supporting a, a vendor at the Harvest Fair. See, that's what it's about. I'll look and see what I can find out. Tonight. No, I, I just wanted to say I appreciate your time tonight. And I think we have most questions answered regarding the skate space. And I do wish and hope that in the spring, maybe around Memorial Day, the children will be down there and having fun. The kids are already play. They've been they've been playing there ever since they got finished. Well over a month ago, I live right above there, and I can tell you there are kids there every day. Well, we should celebrate that. Well, they we already no, did. We, did. We, <laughs> we had we had a uh, ribbon cutting. Well, never... Martha, I hope it continues. Children need okay. things to do outdoors, whatever it is. Okay. Thank you, Robert. We appreciate right, your opinion. Everyone. Yep. Don't forget to vote. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, believe me, it's already done, <laughs> delivered by in-person, okay. privately. Very good. Do we have any other, any other comments? No? Okay. Um, everybody looks good on Zoom. I think we're good. Okay. Well, I think if that uh, covers all the business we have for this evening, we can call it a night. I move to adjourn. I second it. All in favor? All right. Aye.